What prayers does God delay in answering all the way until the seventh seal? In Revelation 8, we see the prayers of the saints that have been held back. And then at the seventh seal, they all rise like incense before the Lord. What are these prayers that God delays in answering? That's what we're talking about today, and we're starting right now. Ten years ago, when we started our ministry, I would hear a lot of Christians say things like, I want Jesus to return, but you know, not too quickly. People would say that because they wanted to see their children grow, get married, have their grandkids, etc. In other words, most of those we ministered to at that time loved their lives in this world more than being with Jesus. Life was good, and they didn't want it to change. I don't hear that as much anymore. One thing the events of 2020 and 2021 have done is to focus attention on how broken this world is and how much we need the physical return of Jesus right now. Maranatha, even so, come Lord Jesus. But is this the unanswered prayer of Revelation 8? Is it a prayer for the return of the Lord? Let's look at the passage surrounding the seventh seal. When the Lamb opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. Then I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and seven trumpets were given to them. And another angel came and stood at the altar with the golden censer, and he was given much incense to offer, with the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints rose before God from the hand of the angel. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire from the altar and threw it on the earth, and there were peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. The events of the first six seals, which are the four horsemen, the martyrs, and the dramatic darkening of the sun, moon, and stars, get so much attention in the prophetic press, but the seventh seal, you know, not so much. But these events at the seventh seal answer a whole lot of questions we would not have many of the debates that we have about Jesus' return if these events were better understood. But what is most interesting to me are those prayers that the angel mixes with incense that rise before the Lord. What are these prayers? Who prayed them? And why are they rising at this point? In order to understand them, however, we need to take apart all the portions of the seventh seal because they give us clues as to what these prayers are. After Jesus breaks open that final seal on the scroll, the scroll opens and immediately there is silence in heaven. Think about that. The most musical, praise-filled place in the whole universe with angels constantly crying, holy, 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 suddenly goes eerily quiet. This event is seen in a prophecy from the prophet Zephaniah. Be silent before the Lord God. For the day of the Lord is near. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice and consecrated his guests. We discussed this verse before in other videos. Notice that the day of the Lord's wrath is near, but hasn't happened yet. This is a great timing verse because Revelation 6:17, after the sixth seal, we see the 24 hour day that God's wrath begins. But as of the seventh seal, the wrath hasn't started yet. So we are still in that 24-hour period, the great and awesome day of the Lord, the period right before the wrath begins. In Zephaniah, we also see two other things happen. One is that God has prepared a great sacrifice. This is the punishment of the wicked still on the earth during the upcoming wrath of God. But again, it's only prepared, not yet accomplished. The other thing is that God has consecrated his guests. As we mentioned in other videos, these guests are humans raptured into the presence of God who are made holy or consecrated so that they can enter the presence of the Father. We had just seen these raptured persons in Revelation's narrative back in Revelation 7-9 as the great multitude who came out of the great tribulation and are now before his throne. At first, in Revelation 7, they were in loud praise, but now, in Revelation 8, Everyone becomes silent. This answers a big question about what those prayers are. They aren't prayers for Jesus to return because he's already returned as of Revelation 7. 
those prayers for his return are already answered. The righteous have been resurrected, given resurrection bodies, and were raptured into the presence of God. So let's keep looking for an answer as to what these prayers are. Next in Revelation 8, we see that the seventh seal is broken and that the seven trumpet judgments are handed out to the seven angels who will blow them. This is a key point in the narrative missed by many, many, many people, even many scholars. This timing verse shows that all of the seven seals are broken before a single trumpet is blown. The trumpets aren't even handed out to the angels until after the seventh seal is broken. This passage also hints at the purpose of the prayers. Those prayers are offered before God on the altar of incense in heaven. This one is just like the altar of incense that stood before the Holy of Holies in Solomon's temple. In fact, all of Revelation is a tour, so to speak, of the temple in heaven that is a mirror image of Solomon's temple. If you want to learn about how Revelation describes this temple and all the furniture in it and all their purposes, click right here in the upper right to see a video we did on that topic. Once you understand this, Revelation becomes so much easier to understand. Now these prayers were reserved for this moment from before the first seal was even broken. We see these prayers being held by the four living creatures and the 24 elders. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamp, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. So some of the prayers that go up before the father were held back since before the seals started breaking. Now, obviously, God hears our prayers, but doesn't always answer them immediately. Sometimes he says, not yet. And this seems to be the case with these prayers. In Revelation, we see an example of prayers not answered yet that are added to these earlier prayers from before the first seal. This happens at the fifth seal. They cried out with a loud voice, O Sovereign Lord, holy and true, how long before you will judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? And they were given each a white robe and told to rest a little while longer until the number of their fellow servants and their brothers should be complete, who were to be killed as they themselves had been. These are the martyrs beneath the altar of sacrifice. Now that's a different altar. It's an altar outside of the holy place of God. It's not the altar of incense where the prayers are offered. In Solomon's temple, the altar of sacrifice was outside of the main temple building, the holy place. These martyrs being under that other altar that's outside of the main temple building fits perfectly because as of the fifth seal, when these martyrs cry out in prayer, Jesus has not yet returned, and the martyrs are not yet consecrated or given resurrection bodies. They are not yet made holy enough to be able to appear before the Father. And their prayer is for God to avenge their blood on the earth dwellers, who, of course, are the wicked, who are not taken in the rapture, those who killed and tortured the saints during the Great Tribulation. This is the prayer that they are told they must wait for before it is answered. God has a specific number of martyrs who must die in this way before the consummation of the ages. This is an incredible and kind of distressing end time sign no one wants to talk about. God has a specific number of martyrs who must be killed before Jesus returns. So are these the prayers that ascend to the Father after the seventh seal? I think so, especially because Jesus has already returned at that point. What other prayers remain unanswered? It is also the moment when the wrath of God is about to begin. This is confirmed by the angel who then takes the incense censer, fills it with fire from the altar and casts it upon the earth. This is a direct parallel to Ezekiel 10 through 11, where the man dressed in linen takes fire from between the cherubim and casts it upon Jerusalem, marking that city for God's wrath. In the same way, this angel marks the whole earth 
for God's wrath, which starts with the trumpet judgments. Now, there are many who think the golden censer might be symbolic of an asteroid or comet thrown upon the earth. If you click right here, you can explore how all of the first six trumpets match up exactly with events that might follow an asteroid strike. This is Nelson, and I'll see you there.